Well, good evening. Welcome to Concord Baptist Church Bible Study. You'll have to forgive us tonight. We we're running late and we didn't have time to make it home in order to get cleaned up and, and to uh, do the devotional. So the church was halfway and that gave us time to get there. So we came to the church and I thank the Lord that Miss Randall forgot to take her cake dish home Sunday after church and I was hungry and there was chocolate cake in there and I was able to make some coffee and I was able to have some chocolate cake and coffee. It was good too. Amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Great Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here this evening. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you watched over us today. And uh, Lord, I pray for my wife. I pray that you would touch her physically and Lord, uh, heal her up and uh, let her get out of that bed of affliction, Lord, if it be thy will. And give her grace to go through it. Lord, she's been through a lot uh, these last few years with all these health issues. And we pray that you'd help her. And Lord, we pray for uh, Pastor Weaver's wife, Lord, with her back. And Lord, they might have to do surgery on her. Pray that you'd be with her and help her so that she might be able to get some relief. And uh, we pray for Brother Steve, Lord, and his upcoming surgery. And I uh, pray you help him, Lord, Danny Mallory, uh, Brother Roger Dorn, uh, Brother Dale's uh, friend that was ill. Lord, uh, so many people need your help. And I pray that you would be so gracious as to extend your healing power to them. And uh, we pray for all our preacher friends, and our brothers and sisters. I pray for my brother, Lord, that... Uh, Good to hear that he came back with a negative COVID test, but Lord, he's still sick, so I pray that you'd help him. And uh, Lord, I don't understand why they do a COVID test and then tell you to go see a doctor just in case. Uh, crazy world we live in. Lord, I pray for our country. Lord, we, we've got some serious needs here in this country right now. And I pray you grant a lot of grace. And Lord, you've been so good to us. I know we don't deserve it. But Lord, we do thank you for it. We want to praise you for what you've done for us. Lord, be with us tonight now. And uh, again, Lord, I pray for my children, my grandchildren, great-granddaughter, my cousins, my nieces and nephews, my aunts and uncles. Lord, you know all their needs. But Lord, the one thing they need more than anything is a spiritual need uh, if they don't know you as Lord and Savior. And so I pray that you would deal with their hearts. And Lord, be with us now as uh, we study the Word of God. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right, I got a song I haven't heard in a while. I love it. It's called Down From His Glory. Uh, we're going to play that for you. And then Jasmine, since she's the only one with me tonight, she's going to do an instrumental on the piano. Amen.
from his glory. All right, Jasmine's going to uh, play a little tune here for us. Amen? If you can't hear it, let me know. I'll walk it over to her. sitting over here earlier when she was practicing and uh, this thought here just ran through my mind you know 17 years ago right after we bought the avalanche that's one reason I don't want to get rid of my avalanche I've had it for 17 years just now putting the motor and a transmission in it and uh, we went down to Savannah and picked up Jasmine and uh, my wife got in the back of the avalanche and Strapped her in the car seat. She was eight months old. And I'm thinking, what have you done? I'm 51 years old. I said, what am I, what am I doing? Am I crazy or what? And about that time she went, Ew. she Googled. Or not Googled, giggled or something, whatever the babies do. And my heart melted, hey Ben. And that was 17 years ago. And, uh, I'm so thankful she's here. And I was sitting there watching her. I said, from that little baby in the back seat of the car, tooting in her diaper. <laughs> Amen. She's up here sitting on a piano stool, and I'm just watching her fingers go across the keys. Amen. Plays the trumpet and the guitar and the mandolin and the ukulele. And man, she must have got it from her mother. Right, hon? Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to uh, Hebrews in chapter 8. Hebrews in chapter 8. We'll begin in verse 1. It says, Now the things which we have spoken, and we went over this the other night when we were on the Melchizedek priesthood, 
And uh, he says, Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who was set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens. Now look at the next verse. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. We're going to look at the tabernacle tonight uh, in the wilderness, the one that man pitched, not the Lord. But he says, for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices and so that's also means you as a being in the order of the Melchizedek priesthood. He says that you're ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, and I hope you're doing that. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Now look at verse 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. All right, so there's a tabernacle in heaven that the Lord pitched. And he said, and there are priests that offer gifts according to the law who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. He says, For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. So when Moses went up on the mount, while he was up there 40 days, the Lord was showing him some things that he needed to do, some things he needed to make. You think about the gift that God gave these Israelites to be able to do the things that they did and make the things that they made. Now, we're going to go back to Exodus, Exodus in chapter 36. And what I want to do tonight is, I'm not going to hit the whole tabernacle tonight. We'll pick it up in piecemeal because there's so much to cover. But I want to show you a picture of it. Back in the early 90s, I was fortunate enough to get a picture of the tabernacle. This is the tabernacle proper. This is uh, the tabernacle itself. And all around it, Israel camped. It had to set up according to uh, the tribes that God had told them to set up. And right here is what we want to look at tonight. Let me see if I'm on it. Here's the what they call the Shekinah glory. It was a fire by night and a cloud by day. Believe it or not, they had central heat and air in the desert. God provided it. But anyway, here's the tabernacle. Which way? Long ways. Long ways? Are we there? Yes. All right. Later on, we'll get back to the linen around it and the fence and all that. But I want to I wanna focus on the coverings tonight that make up the tabernacle proper. Let me get back over here. Now, in chapter 36 of Exodus, let me see, let me start in, let me start in verse 1. Then wrought Bezalel and Ahoa Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary, according to all that the Lord had commanded. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even every one whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. 
And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. You talk about a given heart. They gave more than they had to. They gave in abundance to where they actually had to tell them to quit giving. For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. And every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work made he them. The length of one curtain was twenty and eight cubits and the breadth of one cur cu uh, curtain four cubits and the curtains were all of one size. And he coupled the five curtains one unto another. And the other five curtains he coupled one unto another. And he made loops of blue on the edge of one curtain from the selvage in the coupling. Likewise, he made in the uttermost side of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops made he in one curtain. And you know five is the number of death and the number of grace times 10 makes 50, 10 being the number of the Gentile. But he says, 50 loops made he in one curtain and 50 loops made he in the edge of the curtain, which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one curtain to another. And he made 50 tatches of gold and coupled the curtains one unto another with the tatches. So it became one tabernacle. Now, this tabernacle in the wilderness was a picture in type of the Lord Jesus Christ. And how He came from heaven to dwell upon this earth. And every time they went in there, it preached Jesus Christ. Yet, the people of Israel still missed Him when he came unto his own. Now, that curtains of fine twine linen, he says blue, that's a picture of heaven, and purple, picture of royalty, and scarlet, amen, scarlet, blood, and sin. With cherubims of cunning work made he them. Now, there's four curtains to this tabernacle. And each one represents a part of the Lord Jesus Christ in his body. This part here represents his deity. That he is God. Amen. That he came from heaven. And that he is a royal king. The next one. Verse 14. And he made curtains of goats here for the tent over the tabernacle. Eleven curtains he made them. And the length of one curtain was thirty cubits, and four cubits was the breadth of one curtain. The eleven curtains were of one size. And he coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loop <coughs> excuse me, fifty loops upon the uttermost edge of the curtain in the coupling. And fifty loops made he upon the edge of the curtain with which coupleth the second. And he made fifty tatches of brass to couple the tent together that it might be one. Now, brass is a picture of judgment. The curtains of goats here represent him as our scapegoat. You remember when we went through Leviticus? They took two goats. One was slaughtered. Blood was shed and offered for the sins of the people. And then they confessed the sins on the head of the scapegoat and he was turned into the wilderness to never come back again. I have two things there that I think of. One of them is that he took our sins away that we'll never have to face them again. Amen. 
The second thing, I thought, and I haven't studied this out yet, and I mentioned it lightly the other night. The Bible says if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, I believe that the Lord, according to his foreknowledge, confessed all our sins that we ever would commit, even after we were saved. And that scapegoat carried him into the wilderness. Amen? Now, that's another story, but the goats here does represent the goats that were offered up as a sacrifice and the ones sent into the wilderness. Now, the third covering. <clears throat> And he made a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red. Ram skins dyed red. And what do you reckon that represents? That represents the blood in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is God's blood. Acts 20:28 20, says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and over all the flock which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So that tabernacle represents the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, in type. So now we've got one more covering. And he says, and a covering of badger skins above that. A covering of badger skins. When I showed you that picture... You noticed it was dark brown. Nothing spectacular about it at all. That's a picture of the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to read you a verse in a moment. But inside that tabernacle, and we'll get to that in another date, there was boards there. Well, let's read. We can read some of this in chapter 36, verse 20. And he made boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood, standing up. The length of a board was ten cubits, and the breadth of one of a board one cubit and a half. A cubit is about eighteen inches. One cubit had two tenons, equally distant one from another. Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And he made boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side, southward, and 40 sockets of silver. Now the silver represents the blood of Jesus Christ. The boards, the shittim wood, was an incorruptible wood. That's a picture of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why it says he saw no corruption. And in Luke chapter 1, that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And... The boards, they were like, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The posts we buy for the ground that don't rot or is not supposed to rot. Uh, treated wood. But this was a natural treated wood. Amen. God made it. It's called shittim wood. And he made the boards. And they overlaid the boards with pure gold. So I just said that to say this. Think about this. Here's those sockets of silver. I think they weighed about, I forget what they said, somewhere around maybe 100 pounds apiece. And they set these boards in all the way around that were covered in pure gold. And here's this first curtain when you walk in of fine twine linen with purple and scarlet and blue, amen, with cherubims and broderied on it. Picture of heaven. That's the internal picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is God. And you think about what that tabernacle looked like inside with, when the candlestick was lit, and that thing was lit up, and all that gold shimmering on them boards, set in sockets of silver, amen, and the beautiful covering. Now I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 53. You see, when people coming through or the, saw from the outside that tabernacle, all they saw was an old brown badgered skin tent. They didn't see the glory inside.
It's nothing that anybody would desire to have. It was just a little badger's tent, what they saw from the outside. In Isaiah, in chapter 53, he says, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. Now think about that tent as we read about the Lord Jesus Christ. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Amen. Jesus just looked like a man upon this earth. There was no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And he walked among his people. But inside, he was God. He is God. Inside was the blood that flowed through his veins, the blood of God. He was our scapegoat. Jesus Christ is the one that took our sins, and he became our scapegoat with the goat hair covering. And then the fine twine linen with the blue and the purple and the scarlet was his royalty and his kingliness. Amen? The only ones that's going to see that, to the average person out here, they say he's a good prophet, or he's a good teacher. But they don't realize he is God Almighty manifest in the flesh. For in him dwelleth the whole Godhead bodily. And he says, he is despised and rejected of men, men of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. God the Father had to turn on God the Son because of us, so that we could become sons. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Remember I said he's our scapegoat. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He has brought us a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? <clears throat> for he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, with the rich, rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he will bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. When we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire. When they looked at the old tabernacle, the stranger come by, there was nothing there to be desired but inside. It was beautiful. And when a person repents of their sin and turns to the Lord Jesus Christ and turns to God through the Lord Jesus Christ and his shed blood, he opens up their eyes, and they begin to see the beauty, the glorious beauty of what that man called Jesus is. Amen? And that's why we played that song tonight, Down From His Glory, Ever Living Story. The Lord Jesus Christ left His glory above. He left the true tabernacle, which the, He prayed, He pitched and not man and came down and walked with men so that he could redeem us save our souls so that we could become a son and a soldier and a king and a priest and we ought to practice 
the priesthood ourselves. All right, well, that's all I've got for you tonight. I hope you got something out of it. Let's pray. Grace, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the things that you showed us. We thank you for what you did for us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us in spite of ourselves when we are unlovable. And Lord, I pray you watch over each and every person tonight and keep us. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and ask these things. Also, we'll try to pick up some more on the tabernacle when you see the whole story. It ought to warm your heart if you're saved. Amen. Amen. Good night.